there was certain times I'd be driving up the motorway and it, there was times when I think there was a what if and a, if only like, what, what if I do a right into this central reservation that was places I didn't want to be, places I didn't really want to go but these are thoughts in your head, would it be better without me hooking a, a right here into the central reservation. I think I, um, I started suffering about, I think it was about nine years ago. For whatever reason, I don't really know what kicked it off for me. I think um, my mood swings, um, anger, I went to a few anger management courses. There was times even like with my children, I'd come home from football and my little lad at the time would ask me to go and play football in the garden and I'm like, not that I didn't want to, I'd be like, Oh, Charlie, I'll do it with you in a minute. And then obviously me ex would be on, just play in the garden with him for five, ten minutes while I cook the tea. I'll go out there for a bit. And you're like, what's up with your dad? It's like, I oh, just tired me. But I could feel I could feel that cloud coming over me around certain things. And for whatever reason, I I knew I was becoming a person I didn't really want to be. I was becoming somebody that people didn't like to be around. And I'd isolate myself from being around certain things. Now, when we think about mental health problems, we tend to think about them in in two sort of ways, really. There's severe enduring mental health problems, such as psychosis and bipolar disorder and sort of severe depression and severe anxiety disorders, which affects about 0.5 to 1% of the population. And then there are the much broader common mental health problems, which can affect somewhere between 1 and 4 and 1 and 6 of us. The common mental health problems tend to be grouped into depression and the anxiety disorders. And when we think about the incidence of mental health problems amongst the population, we tend to think of it as not being a discriminator of age, of education, of gender, of profession. Um, it, can, it can literally affect anybody at any time. It's part of the human condition. It's one of our vulnerabilities as humans. I had to go and get counselling again. Um, I texted the guy. He hadn't replied for an hour or so. I went on WhatsApp. Obviously, with WhatsApp, you can see the blue ticks. And um, I'd seen he read me message, but not replied. And I think back then, I put all my confidence in him and obviously opened up to him. Told him I was a few demons that I thought might have gone through and got me in the situation I am, but yet never ever replied to me. So then, as I say, I spoke to the PFA again and um, they put me in touch with some guy. I'd done loads of paperwork with him, loads of homework type stuff, which I think benefited me. Um, he advised me to start taking up yoga, which I did and I'm still doing to this day, which if you'd have told me even three years ago I'd be doing yoga, I'd laugh at you. But when I first went, people were not just talking about yoga, they were talking about meditation and seeing colours as such and that, and I'm like, these these mad days in here, I'm, I've come to do yoga, obviously, here I am, 12 months on from doing yoga, and I'm into a bit of a meditation myself, so, um, it's quite funny um, that I actually took it up, but I wouldn't have, only for the, obviously, the guy, the counsellor who i seen, he's actually been through his own dark times, which I think, from my personal point, someone like that can help someone, I don't think, my other counsellor has actually been through stuff where he had, he'd been through stuff and he'd helped me massively to get where I am today and um, I'm in a better place. From a physiological perspective, when we think about depression, people generally experience poor concentration, lower energy levels, poor sleep. They may have... Um, a sense of um, anxiety, 
and from a an emotional perspective people would experience um, perhaps a low mood a sense of emptiness a sense of loss um, from a behavioral perspective people who experience depression tend to become increasingly isolated and avoidant um, they tend to stop doing the things that they would normally be doing on a routine basis maybe avoiding the things that start to make them feel more and more uncomfortable from a psychological perspective we'd be thinking about how an individual would perceive themselves and how they how they would think that other people perceive them and how they perceive other people and um, there would be a negative theme running through these thoughts that an individual would have. As I speak to people now, I think there's a build-up of little things where you're in a football environment which is seen as a macho place and all little things to injuries, to not getting picked, to worrying about your next contract, um, personal life. I think you, you let it build up and I think that's what I did for over eight years, I think I let it build up and then all of a sudden it's exploded and I lost obviously my ex-partner, my ex the mother of my kids through certain things which were going on through me being in depression, which I didn't know at the time. Since I did speak out on Twitter and on social media, the response I got was unbelievable and I think the summer when I did speak out at the World Cup was on, I think he had three or four lads who I don't know, would it be all right to come and ch chat to you? And I was like, well, you can come and chat to me. I can tell you what I've been through, but I'm not a doctor. But yet their first response was, well, I feel more comfortable speaking to you and what you've done in the game. And we watched the World Cup. We had a, I'll be honest with you, I had a cry with a couple of them. Um, there was a Grimsby fan who reached out to me and got to speak to him through um, social media, Twitter. He spoke to me regarding his issues and problems and said, like, I'm not his favourite player if... If he did see me in the local pub, probably back then he'd have chinned me. Um, but we got on really well. I had a few chats to him. Um, he was telling me he was in a, a bad place. My advice was to him, go and speak to your wife and tell her how you feel and tell her what you are. So the standout thing for me was we got battered at Tramia Rovers away on Boxing Day. Um, on the way home, I'm driving home, obviously pissed off because you just lost the football game again. He texts me saying, Kev, I just want to say thank you to you. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here today, which um, I think back then, as I'm getting a bit emotional now, um, for somebody to say that to me, I didn't speak out to, to help others at the time. I spoke out to get the monkey off my back and for me to be in a better place. But for the amount of people that have come to me and obviously I've, I've tried to help people, which wasn't, as I say, wasn't my intention, but that text meant, meant an awful lot to me and I think he's coming down in April when we play Grimsby, which would be great to find and meet somebody like that, somebody who, who's not a footballer, somebody who goes to work every day and somebody I, I think I've helped in a, in a massive way. Because um, I, I live alone now and you, you sit and you run over things and how I'd react to certain situations and you realise certain things have, wouldn't affect me now where back then, a couple of years ago, it had been a major issue in my life yet I still wouldn't have told anybody about it but I knew inside it'll be eating me away. Going through what I've been through and coming out the other side, hopefully for the better, I can control things which probably was eating me up inside and was killing me, basically. For me, speaking out about mental health and obviously not being as manly as people thought I was and admitting to a bit of vulnerable, obviously showing me feelings. Yeah, I will be judging the football world. Is it wrong? 100% it's wrong. You can't tell me that there's other footballers there who have not spoken out yet. But yet, you know, they're probably in, some of them will be in a worse place than me.
when we consider how to manage common mental health problems, the key concept is to understand and recognise how we react to given situations and then to be able to respond to those reactions in a way that's going to give the best outcome to us. So if we find ourselves going into a situation and we're starting to um, react to that situation by having negative thoughts about ourselves, the response to that may well be to question the validity of those thoughts and to disengage from them and to remind ourselves of the bigger picture. Playing games and training kept my mind off certain things and as I say I speak to people and I, I was offered medication which I refused to take. I read a few side effects of certain medications they were trying to offer me at the time and um, I didn't want to take it. I thought it's come on its own, it's going on its own type. So for me football was a relief, football was my medication in a way of me getting through my dark times. I know there is a big stigma and a big taboo around mental health. I know being a man in football as well, especially, I think um, if you do speak out, I think some people will seem to see it as a weakness and judge it a little bit, but it's so easy to go and speak to somebody. It, it doesn't cost anything. What's to say with your mate? Listen, I feel a bit crap today. Um, can we go and have a coffee and have a chat and from speaking to a few other people? It's the little things that do eventually build up and explode. So yeah, why not go and speak to somebody? You may put an arm around your mate and say, listen, I don't feel good today. I need to speak to you about something. 